Hi, welcome to this session today. My name is Richard Curtis, I work for Adobe in the UK and I'm a solutions consultant looking after digital imaging. Digital imaging includes obviously Photoshop, Lightroom, Elements, as well as the other aspects of digital imaging that we have in Adobe, which is the touch apps on the Android devices and the iOS devices, but also includes the Creative Cloud and the workflows around the Creative Cloud. I must admit, I'm pretty excited about this release. It's got some great features inside it for photographers around the world. Let's have a look at the new features inside Lightroom 5. We're going to talk about today in more detail, but this is just a very, very quick overview. The new radial filter enables me to isolate content within images. It provides that way to really focus the attention of the viewer onto the element that I want them to focus on. The advanced healing brush enables me to move away from just a circular clone heel stamp tool that we had before into actually drawing my own brush type and actually making any shape I would like. We've got a great new feature called Upright and I've been using this recently quite a bit just to correct any perspective distortion that I have on images and we'll show that in a few minutes. The other element I'm very excited about as I'm a travel photographer and I like taking my computer on a, on a travel trip to do photography is that I'm able now to work offline when my main images aren't connected to my computer on a, on a typical hard disk. So I'm able to create some smart previews, and these smart previews are low-res images that I can use and edit. So I can edit in Lightroom, and those changes are saved back to the disk when I need them to be saved when it's plugged in later. And also, we like to improve the workflow of Lightroom all the time. So we've, we've got a program in place called the JDI program, the Just Do It program, and these are workflow items that are incorporated and you'll see a few of these as we go through today but there's over 50 additional JDI items inside Lightroom 5. There's, here's also a slide just going through the platform compatibility and system requirements that we need now for Lightroom 5. Okay so let's get on to the demo. The first JDI I'm going to talk about is actually full screen mode. So full screen mode is now available on the F key and at any point in time, I can convert Lightroom into that full screen mode. But let's get into the new features. The first feature I'm going to show is the advanced healing brush. If I just move Lightroom into the development mode and pick the healing brush tool, the existing functionality of the healing brush is still there. So I can go over here and I can remove this item of the, of the scene quite easily by just using the Wacom tablet and just, just moving out to my clone area. However, if I want to get rid of this object, it's a bit more tricky. And what I don't want to do is create a large round circle around this object. What I'd rather do is create a shape using my Wacom pen and just changing the size of the clone heel tool, just using my, the ring on my Wacom tablet. I'm able to now draw in the area that I'd like to replace. And Lightroom will do its best at matching it. Now I've got opacity turned on here as well. So don't forget, you can use opacity to not fully conceal an element of the scene, or you can conceal it fully with 100% opacity. So just make sure you don't forget about those guys over there. And Lightroom's done a pretty good job of replacing that content. Obviously I can move this around and I can replace content from anywhere in the scene that I would like to. I just want to go to this picture here for a second. And you can see on here, I may want to do some spotting. So spotting in Lightroom is used typically when you're trying to get rid of any dust marks from the sensor of the camera, or little items like this, little, little mark on the hat, a couple of little marks over here that you might want to get rid of. But sometimes I don't want to work too hard when I'm doing this, I want to make it really easy for myself. So there's a new feature at the bottom called Visualize Spots, and Visualize Spots will turn on a mask onto this picture which enables me to see those dust spots and any spots easily without having to work too hard. So I'm just going to turn this into one-to-one -one mode now and use the space bar to drag the picture around. Incidentally, I can actually use the Visualize Spot slider to change how much is coming through of the mask. I'm just going to dial it back down there because I only need to see it like about there. And I'm just going to use the Wacom tablet again and just change the size of my brush and paint in the areas that I would like to remove. And you can see there, it's doing a pretty good job of getting rid of those spots and painting in those areas that I need to paint in. 
And I can also then turn off visualize spots and those spots have now disappeared. And again, it also may be, may be, may be the right thing to do to not fully conceal a, a clone spot. So I can then use the opacity again just to dial that back in a little bit so I can see a little bit of the mark, but it's not too much that my eye catches it when it goes across the scene. Okay, so that's the advanced healing brush. The next feature I'm very excited about is the upright tool, and I've been using this quite a lot recently. So the upright tool can work out where the horizontals and the verticals are in the picture and automatically to correct the perspective for me. So let's do that now. If we go into the development tab, and then go into the lens correction tab over here on the right hand side. We can see that the upright mode has got multiple options. It has off, auto, level, vertical and full. Let's go through them now very quickly. So off obviously turns off that lens correction. Auto will enable Lightroom to look at the picture and have a best guess at how it needs to fix this picture. Let's do that now. You can see it's done a pretty good job of looking at the horizon and working the horizon out, but it also looks at the verticals of the house as well, or the little shed, and it puts that perspective in for me as well. The difference between the levels and the verticals is that levels will look at just the horizontal level, vertical will look at a combination of horizontal level and vertical level, and full will do a full 3D warp for the correction. So, it's worthwhile having a look at each one of those as we go along. Now, this does work better when the enable, enable profile corrections is turned on. So it's worthwhile turning that on first and then pushing the, pushing the buttons and work out which one is going to be best. Let's do one other picture to show you another effect of this. So you can see here this, this photograph of the horses in the field. It's quite badly distorted. So I'm going to enable the profile corrections first of all, just to make sure I can set any pin cushion on that uh, distortion. And then I'm going to try auto and see how much auto can fix this scene. And if I push it, you can see it does a pretty good job, although there is still a little bit of curvature on the top of this bar. Now I know that level won't fix that, but I can push that anyway. And you can see that it fixes the levels, but doesn't fix the vertical. If I choose vertical, it does a combination of the two but obviously you can see here a little bit of cropping that needs to be done to the image to pull that out. If you push the full, it'll full a full 3D warp and straighten this bar, straighten the horizon and all the verticals at the same time. It's definitely worthwhile using this. I've used it recently quite a lot and I've had some great results. And I think this will speed up your workflow and it, you don't, it means you don't have to go into Photoshop as much to use the adaptive wide angle. Therefore, you can run across multiple images and correct those images as you need to correct them. Let's just go into the radial gradient tool. So the radiant gradient tool has been implemented inside Lightroom 5, mainly down to the post crop vignette. With a post crop vignette, you can put the vignette on only around the edges, but sometimes you actually need to isolate parts of an image. So you see here on this picture, you have these cowboys, but those cowboys are lost with the brightness of the scene. So actually what I want to do is to highlight the cowboys and darken everything else around them. So let's move into the development module now and let's choose the new radial filter and you can see the radial filter is just here. The radial filter is able to draw a round or any shape, round elliptical shape you like and to darken the area that you're, the outside of the area that you've drawn. So let's just lower the exposure. So you can see there by lowering the exposure, it really focuses my eye on the cowboys rather than the scene around it. I can also change the amount of feathering in the actual mask itself. I can also invert the mask as well. Okay, so it's worthwhile having a play around and having a working with the, with the radial filter. Now you may have noticed when I'm working with these edits, I'm working with them quite normally. It's a, res, a full res image that I'm working with. I've got access to all my development tools. But one thing you should notice is that these have all been edited without my external hard drive connected. So actually all my images are on my G drive. And you can see on the left hand side here, that the G drive actually isn't connected. 
In fact, everything is all offline. And on the right hand side, you can see that I have Smart Preview turned on. And Smart Preview recognizes that this image is offline, but it's enabled me to have a small proxy on my local computer, which is enough to edit, and I can edit and make sure that any edits that I'm working with here will get automatic transfer back to my external drive when it's connected. So let's just turn my external drive on now so you can see what happens. So that's my external drive turned on. And you can see now, as soon as it recognizes, as soon as it recognizes that fact, you can see that the images are now online, the drive's online, and actually now you get the original plus the smart preview. So Lightroom's intelligent enough to tell you when it's working with smart previews or when it's working with original or not. And it will automatically synchronize the changes that I've made on my edits into my drive now because that's recognized that change. As a travel photographer or someone who's away from the computer, away from their home a lot or from the studio, I think that's really going to help their workflow immensely. The other element we've enhanced in Lightroom is around the slideshows. More and more people are using video with their DSLR cameras and sometimes you may want to include video as part of a slideshow. So we have some images here as part of this slideshow and one of those images is actually not an image at all, it's a video. And I can play that video now and you can see it's just a horse with some snow around it. If I select all those images and go to the slideshow, I'm just going to select the selected photograph and I'm just going to run the slideshow. You can see there that we have slide one coming through and subsequent slides will follow. So you can see there quite seamlessly the video plays as part of the slideshow. Once the video is now completed, it will then move in automatically into the next image. OK, we've made a few, we've made a few enhancements to the book module, so let's go through those now. If I just go to this page, if I just go to this page on the book module, I now have on the page menu, on the, if I now go to the page tab, I now have page numbers. So I can now turn page numbers on on any page on the book. And I can also choose where that's going to be on the page, the top, the side, or the bottom, or even the top corner or the bottom corner. Just go to full, full page for this here. And you can see if I right click on the page, I can start page numbering or hide page numbering to this page. So let's just start page numbering. And you can see here that this now is page one of the book. If I go to the next page, it's page two, and go to the next page, it's page three, and so on and so on. The other enhancement in book module is that we've made it very easy to add text. So let's go and change this page here to include some text. So if we go to a one page photo with some text aside of it, we can go in and just move into one page mode. We can just start typing text and that text will appear in that box. We've created on the tabs a text tab and that text tab will just is just pure text. We also still have the type tab as well, so we can create custom type presets, but fundamentally it's made it much easier to put text and type into the book. One thing that was missing from Lightroom 4 when we introduced the book module was the ability to create templates. So what I want to do is customize this page of the book. I'm going to just move into two page spread mode. I'm going to choose a three photo book and I'm going to have the three photo layout and you can see here I've got my top picture and I may want to have some corresponding imagery at the bottom so let's just find a couple of pieces that we can use for that so let's just take this one and put it here and let's take this one 
and put it down here. We may want to go in then into single page mode and just change the padding. So we change the padding of the book, make it like this so it fits. And this one as well. What I can then do is right click and I can save this as a user page. Saving as a user page will save that definition into the user pages for reuse elsewhere in the book. So let's go to another page in the book where well, I'd like to have the same effect, maybe over here, and go to the little arrow and say I want to pick it from the user pages. You can now see I have my template that's got all the padding inside it and all the areas of other imagery as well. So I can make this one look exactly the same. Now, sometimes you, when you're creating the book, you want to do the auto layout. So inside auto layout, let's just edit this layout. And you can also see inside auto layout, you've got the user pages and you have this page inside the user page. So that's pretty exciting to have that. So it means you can create a custom book or a custom look for a page inside your portfolio, maybe for a wedding or for a travel book or whatever you need to do. It just gives you a little bit more functionality to create custom layouts in your book. I'd like now to talk about some of the JDIs that have been put into Lightroom 5. So one of the JDIs is around PNG support. So you can now bring in a native PNG into Lightroom 5 as part of your catalog. When you export that to Photoshop using Edit in Photoshop, that will create you a TIFF or a PSD of that file. We've mentioned the full screen mode, so F. At any point in time you can press F, it'll move Lightroom into a full screen mode. You can now generate large previews with a 2,880 pixels across the long edge. You can use function key F12 to start to the capture. On Windows, we're now supporting high DPI of 150% and 200%. You also have the ability to have LAB readouts on the histogram. Let's just go to the development module now. And if we right click on the histogram, you can see the show lab color values is ticked. So at any point you can see the, the lab values. If I move over the image, you can see all the LAB values. To turn that off, you can turn the show lab color values off and you see the RGB values. Well, that's pretty much Lightroom 5. So I'm pretty excited by it. What I would urge you to do is download the, the trial of the labs. So you can find more information out about Adobe and its products Lightroom, Photoshop and Creative Cloud, all at Adobe TV. That's tv.adobe.com. You can also find my blog at blogs.adobe.com slash Richard Curtis. You can also find me on Twitter at Richard Curtis. It's been great speaking with you today and showing you Lightroom 5. Thanks very much for listening and I hope you've enjoyed that session. Please contact me and reach out to me if you need more information. Thank you very much. Goodbye.